In this episode, we're going to finally install some tubing to distribute our shop air from our compressor system. Now before we even begin to talk about tubing or fittings or anything, the first thing that you need to do is plan out your air system. And that begins with some pen and paper. You want to take some rough measurements of where your shop air starts, which is usually at your compressors, wherever those are, and you need to figure out exactly where you want to run your tubing. Whatever that tubing choice is, you need to figure out where you want it. Do you want half inch, three quarters, one inch? And that's really gonna depend on the volume of air that you're flowing. If you also wanna put it down on paper if you're gonna have any distribution points or hookups or anything. You gotta plan those and you have to plan what fittings you're gonna need. While these fittings that I'm gonna show you are pretty cheap, having to buy them multiple times adds up fast. Um, so again, plan everything, figure out what fittings you're gonna need, go to the hardware store, um, Harbor Freight, Northern, wherever, and look at the fittings and your distribution points, your, um, your accessories, everything like that. Make sure you know what you need for fittings and adapters and all that before you get going. Make a list, stick to the list, draw it out, uh, whatever. I, I can't stress this enough. All right, once you've got that figured out, Get your tubing together. A lot of people swear by this. PVC tubing. It's three quarter inch. Oh, schedule 40. Will this work? Yeah. Something that's very misleading about PVC. It says right there, 480 PSI. Don't let that fool you into thinking that you can run a ton of air through that. Will it work? Yes. And I know a bunch of people that have used this in multiple shops and everything's fine. If you decide to go that route and do it at your own risk. But everything that I've read, everything I've heard from talking to people is this goes in easy. It's cheap. And you simply glue everything together but this was never meant to have oil pumped through it and as you know a lot of these compressors and a lot of these tools need oil so as you add oil you get that oil mist running through here it'll, it'll cause what's called embrittlement and this stuff after a couple years um, from what I've read and heard will actually start to get hard and because right now you know it's got a little bit of flex to it so it's good but that oil plus the temperature fluctuations and any direct sunlight will cause this to get really hard and brittle and I don't know about you but I don't want to be sitting anywhere in the shop when this thing pops at 120 to 180 psi which is the normal range for regular compressors uh, it's like a small plastic pipe bomb but like i said a lot of people have used this for years without issue i however will not be using that i am going to be using pex P-E-X. Don't ask me what it stands for because I don't remember. But it comes in a range of colors. I went with blue. Um, this stuff is cheaper 
than the PVC. And while it's not as easy as just slipping some fittings together and gluing them, well, this stuff goes together super simple. Um, I bought a roll of 100 feet and it comes like this, 100 feet for $28 at Lowe's. 28 bucks for 100 feet ain't bad at all and I don't even think I used half of it for my real simple run in my garage now it does require special fittings um, and for fittings I went with the shark bite brand and it's pretty simple to install now if if you don't, if you haven't run any of this, um, it does take some tools, but the uh, in initial investment in those tools is pretty cheap, and you can use this for other stuff too. Uh, first thing you're going to need, along with your fittings and your tubing, is a means to cut this stuff. It's not hard, it's semi rigid, so you can flex it, and it does retain a little bit of shape. Um, but you don't want to go too far with it because it is a plastic but you need a way to cut it clean and straight so and I'll put links to all this stuff down in the description so what I picked up is this little cutter it's a couple bucks you simply slide it on it it creates its own pressure there's a blade inside of there and there's an arrow so you clip this on and you spin it in the direction of the arrow. I didn't have to squeeze, uh, no adjustments, nothing. Just pop it on there and roll it in the direction of the arrow. Clean, burr free, straight, and that's essential, cut. Your fitting. See how easy that went on? Very little resistance. Is that it? <laughs> no. You put one or two PSI in that and that fitting is going to come off. So there is a clamping means of installing this. Half inch line, half inch clamps. It's pretty simple. Uh, there is a tool and what it does is it clamps on here and squeezes this and compresses it and there's some little keys on it so you can remove these once they are compressed if you need to make a change you can just lift this edge up and it'll spring open um, instructions kind of go over that and you got your clamp your fitting and your tubing, you simply slide it over and there's a recommended amount of tubing that should be left past the clamp and then you need a tool. There is a very expensive option for this tool at the hardware store and a few other places. I've seen it as high as $129. Now, I'll provide a link to this one from Amazon. I want to say it was 20 bucks, and it came with a ton of these fittings. Enough that I was able to run my entire air system and have some left over. Um, it almost looks like a pair of bolt cutters. But it slides onto that. Piece there and this is a little more difficult doing this when you're up on a ladder and it's above you so what you can do is kind of deform this just a little bit make sure it's in a position where you need it turn your clamp move your tubing move your fitting once you get everything where you want it then you squeeze it 
and you keep going till it hits the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, it'll actually release. And it deforms that piece right there, which draws it up very tight. That's not coming off. And I know it works because I ran 150 PSI through mine once it was complete. There was zero leaks with the PEC system. Zero. Nothing moved, nothing flexed. The only issue I had was with those st stupid coiled hard tubing, um, those yellow things from Harbor Freight and some of the swivel ends from Harbor Freight, which let's be honest is expected from Harbor Freight. So now that you know how to put the PEC system together, let me show you what I did to get from the PEC system to the actual MPT fittings for all the air accessories. I went with this little guy. And what we're doing is going from half inch pecs to half inch MPT. And we've got these ears that will screw right to the wall. So we come off the pecs line, we'll do with a clamp like we did here. And that gives us a 90 half inch MPT. So most of this stuff is either 3 8 or quarter inch that I have right now. But later on there is some things that I would like to add that are half inch MPT. For now, I have to adapt that down. So we're going from half inch MPT down to 3 8 you can use your 3 8 to quarter inch adapter. And put your chuck on there. Now, for flexibility's sake, on my system, when I, I'll, I'll do a walkthrough, um, I went with, from Harbor Freight, they have a adapter that's like an aluminum disc with three of these off of it which comes in handy because it keeps me from running as much line and as many fittings because I can then use an extension hose and pop right into any one of those three air chuck outlets and run multiple things. I'm going to walk you through my system right now it's pretty basic and then they come up to a, it's a, I believe a five gallon portable tank that I've modified and there's a ball valve at the top and out of that ball valve there's a 3 8 hose to that PEX fitting that I showed you we come over to our first T down into that same type of fitting that I showed you earlier and we have an adapter to the Harbor Freight piece with the three air chucks on it. We're coming off here off that T it goes up the wall behind that ladder runs all the way to that T and there's an air chuck there and now this, I'm going to put one of those spring-assisted air reels up there. From that T, it comes over that beam down the wall, comes down to another one of those fittings. And then the three chuck adapter from Harbor Freight. Pretty simple. Um, I think the whole install maybe took two and a half hours. Less than two hundred dollars in that whole thing. So far so good. I will keep you posted. Uh, 
uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up video in like a year or so and let you guys know if I've had any issues with it. And the best part is, if I ever decide to change it, I cut it, insert my T, put my clamps on, cinch the clamps down, done. But that's it. Pretty simple, uh, pretty quick, pretty cheap. But until next time, guys, get up, get out there, and do it.